Welcome to David Wong's podcast and webinar. Today, I have a really good friend, David Lee. He's a celebrity photographer. He's the founder of thebiohack.org and also davidsguide.com. He's a really good friend of mine. I met him a while back, and we've been able to exchange a lot of tips and, and guidance on how to live better lives, become healthier, and become more successful. So welcome, David. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so tell us um, how you got started in the photography business and uh, how you got into biohacking. So I've been doing photography for a long time. I'm going to be 40 and I started when I was 17. So that's all, that's almost 23 years. And uh, when I was in high school, I won a national journalism competition for Scholastic and the prize was writing for 17 magazine. So I started writing for 17 magazine. They liked what I did and then they found out that I had a digital camera. So they asked me if I wanted to be the official photographer of the Teen Choice Awards. And this was the year of Britney Spears and seeing Backstreet Boys. It was just a super, super fun time. So I um, I went to the Teen Choice Awards with my dad's digital camera. It was a Nikon Coolpix 950, 2.1 megapixels. And I was the only photographer there with a digital camera, if you could believe that or not. Uh, but um, I, I, I was given an all access pass and I, I shot all the celebrities. I met all the agents, managers, publicists. I mean, I was literally like, in the mix of everything. So um, I got the most exclusive pictures and I just love being surrounded by all that creative energy. So that year I became the official digital photographer of, of a lot of the major award shows like the uh, People's Choice Awards, Billboard Music Awards, MTV Movie, MTV Movie Awards and, and so many more. And I was shooting the most exclusive parties. And um, I just, it was just such a such a fun time for me because like I said, just being around that creative energy is just so inspiring. In 2001, I started my first online magazine and I was the first to do fashion editorials online. And I did that when I was going to school at UC Berkeley. So I would, um, I would shoot the fashion editorials. I would do restaurant reviews. Um, I would do technology reviews. And um, I was also writing for other magazines and publications. And over the years, then I started doing my own fashion photo shoots, my own celebrity photo shoots. And um, I was at a party and I met Jamie Presley. And then I showed her some pictures on my little flip phone, which was had like this big of a screen. Mm -hmm. And she asked me if I could take pictures for her clothing line. So she was my first celebrity client. And um, that's where everything started. And since then, I probably shot, I don't know, I probably shot hundreds of celebrities. Um, you know, from Kim Kardashian to Lady Gaga. I, I mean, I've, I've shot a lot of them and yeah. Um, yeah. I have so many stories about that. Um, in 2009, I started my second publication called Destination Luxury. And um, that gave me the opportunity to travel all around the world and just experience life at a, a very luxurious level. Uh, so over the pandemic, everything stopped. All the parties, the restaurants closed. And um, that, that was just an opportunity for me to really dive deep into health, fitness, and biohacking. Mm -hmm. um, I started first by doing intermittent fasting, and um, I lost some weight, and I felt really good. But I wanted to take everything to the next level. So then I, I, um, one of my friends, his name is Alan Torres, he's, he's really into meditation, mindfulness, and emotional mastery he started guiding me and then he invited me to his emotional mastery retreat in Colorado. And, um, that's where I really learned how to meditate. And, um, I learned a lot of metaphysical practices. He's the one that actually told me about dry fasting. And prior to that, I, I I've done some water fast, like the longest I did was a three day water fast. But, um, he told me that dry fasting was three times more effective. And, you know, I'd much rather fast, you know, fast for one day with no food and water, then I, then three days of three days of just water. Yeah. So, um, we were talking about it and, and then we, we started doing, we did a, a seven day dry fast, which, um, it was very tough third day and the sixth day were just like awful, but, um, based on this book called the Phoenix protocol by August Dunning, there's so many things that happen to your, your body when you do a dry fast, especially a seven day dry fast. Mm -hmm. 
So um, when you do a seven day dry fast, all your, your parasites die, your worms die. Uh, you just get a full on cleanse of your entire body. And then you also get a full stem cell generation throughout your whole body. So on the seventh day, when I was done with it, it was just, it was so magical and so amazing. Um, you can't just start eating right away. So after the seven days was over, that sip of water that I had was just like the best sip of water that I, I've ever had in my life because I was so thirsty. My mouth was so dry. I could like, it was just like my breath smelled so bad. It was just <laughs> disgusting. So, so that's but, seven um, days without drinking or eating, right? Yeah, seven days without drinking or eating. Okay. So to rehabilitate, you have to start by drinking bone broth. So I drank bone broth for... I think it was like three or four days. And then after that, then you do totally vegan for another three or four days. And so after a week, then you can start eating all the food that you normally eat. But like, I'm so glad that I did it and it was amazing. Um, so over the pandemic, I started a site called the biohack.org. And it's all about biohacking, holistic healing technology. And, um, you know, that's when, that's when I met you. And um, with all the things that you do with frequency healing and, um, the quantum energy, like I, I was just like, I was really into it. And um, I, I tried like over the pandemic, I probably tried like a million dollars worth of equipments and supplements and different right. diets, different, different fitness things, different um, just like PEMF, red light therapy. Like I was doing it like nonstop. Mm -hmm. So that's really mm -hmm. how my, um, my interest in biohacking happened. And then about a month ago, I started David's Guide, which is all about featuring the, the best in the world with a higher consciousness. I feel like previously in my, my other publications, I would write about things, but I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have the, I didn't have the intention that I, that I have today. And so now when I talk about things, I, I always talk about, like when I interview people, I always ask them, how do you reach higher consciousness? What are your meditation mindset? practices how do you you know how do you get from point a to point b because there's so many things that people do and we need to share that information to inspire and elevate what happened that triggered that um transition into more intention i think it was just because i was over the pandemic i was at my parents house in huntington beach and there was really nothing to do so i really had to get to know myself and once you get to know yourself then there's not so much noise, you know, like people around you, like friends telling you, oh, let's go out here, let's go out there, let's let's do this, let's do that. Like you just have you just have a lot of time to yourself to meditate and find yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's um, why a lot of people found when we couldn't go out, uh, you know, instead of just being bored, just to use it as an opportunity to develop yourself and go inwards, right? Yeah, for sure. And I, I was in Huntington Beach, so I went to the beach a lot. I would meditate on the beach and listen to the, the sounds of the water and feel the sun. And I mean, that's just such a grounding experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. I've been there once on the nicest beaches I've seen. Oh, and it is. It's con all connected to the Long Beach. So it's just, you know, it's just sand as far as I can see, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's take a look at your, your site. I'm on your site now. I'm going to share the screen here. All right. So this is the biohack.org. So just tell us more about what's on this site here. So there's a lot of interviews with different influencers. Um, well, this is this is my friend Trevor. He's he's like he's like a master faster. He he's done, I think he's done like three or four 20 day dry fasts. So no food and no water. 20 days. So wow. yeah, he he really takes everything to the next level. <laughs> but um there there's a lot of there's articles about PEMF or like therapy, weight loss, hair loss. Um, celebrity biohacking stories, nutrition, skin health, and and metaphysical. And you're looking for more people to to add more con uh, content to write for your website. Here? Yeah, yeah, I get a lot of submissions, and it goes through a, a whole process. And if it's you know if it aligns with with my vision, then we publish it. Okay, that's great. So it looks mm -hmm. like there's a lot of um, really interesting articles here. Let's let's look at David's guide. Is it David's dash guide? Oh, it's just davidsguide.com. Okay, tell us more about this here. 
So these are these are all my pictures. That's Mandy Moore, John David Washington, Emily Ratajkowski, and then you can see this cover that that we just published um, today. That's Christopher Gorham. He's the star of Lincoln Lawyer. Mm -hmm. Pull down a little more. That's my my behind the scenes video. Yeah. So you basically connected to everybody in Hollywood. You know everybody. That's anybody. And <laughs> a lot of people. And you, uh, taking photos of pretty much everybody in Hollywood. That's amazing. A lot of, well, not everybody, but a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people. You, 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 wrote, you just wrote a book, right? And you were talking about um, how you're able to manifest basically everything you wanted to do since you were young? Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, so when I, was, um, when I was six years old, I was watching, my family was really into collecting coins. So I, um, I knew that we were going to a coin show and the news had this story about the rarest penny in the world, a 1914 D penny. So it was made in World War I, and it was made at the Denver Mint. And the reason why this is so rare is because it's made of steel instead of copper. So during World War I, the copper was used for bullets. And so um, I don't know why, but I, I knew that, that, that there was this, this table filled with pennies at the, at the coin show. And I knew that you could take whatever you wanted in, in, you know, on this penny table. So, but I also knew that I was going to find that 1914 D, 1914 D penny at the table. And so right when we got to the coin show, I go to that table and I was just going to look for coins, this one specific penny. And I kept on looking and looking and looking and hours passed and more hours passed. And it was like four hours later, you know, after my parents were telling me that we need to go, like we need to go now. <laughs> I, I actually found that 1914 B penny because I was so determined to do it. Really? And I put that energy, that energy and that intention out there. Really? And I found, I found the 1940 D penny and I confirmed it with three microscopes. And today that penny is worth $2,500. So you, you just had this intuition that that penny was going to be intuition on that, that penny was going to be on that table. Yeah. Well, there was no, there was no other option because I just knew that I wanted that penny really bad. So basically, you proved See, that when you focus enough. So and basically, you, you proved that again, when you focus you enough. And you're yeah, and then growing up, I always wanted to travel the world, and and since then, I I've been to forty countries for one to four months at a time, and I've you know I've stayed at I've stayed at the best hotels in the world. I've been to the best restaurants in the world. A lot of them are Michelin stars. I was all about finding experiences and um, attending high profile charity events and meeting influential people. So um, through manifestation, I was able to design my life and, and experience it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Using um, and then how did meditation help you to take that to a new level? Yeah, for sure. I, I really got into meditation over the pandemic and now I meditate about an hour to two every day. So it's like when I'm in the Uber, I just I just meditate because like that's my time to myself. And whenever I'm traveling or any chance that I can or even when I'm tired, then I'll just like I'll just meditate because I feel like it really gives me energy. And um, through meditation, I've been able to think, think a lot more clearly solve my problems and just have um, much better ideas and and like figure out how to really execute things mm -hmm. oh, but there, also one thing about meditation is there is um, i've really i've re you know like everybody in life has a lot of trauma through you know parents or, or anybody and a lot of times really like let go of those things, even though we should. And through meditation, I was really able to let a lot of my past go so that I could move on to the future. Is there any specific, there any specific technique or technique? like method that you use when you meditate? Usually I just, I just lay down on my bed and then it's like, I have this, it's a vibrating bed, so it's really comfortable. And then I, I usually, I usually don't, I just go on YouTube and I look for different meditations. They could be mantras or 
like one of my favorites is Hoshi Water Chimes. And it just plays like these chimes and you hear the ocean. Um, it's just very, it just feels very cleansing. Um, sometimes I'll do guided meditations, but usually I don't. Usually I just do, I, I really, I, I guess it really just depends on my mood. And if I, if I really need something, then I will do a, um, a guided meditation, but usually I don't. Mm -hmm. And then I also use your, um, the resonant frequency one for meditation. <laughs> Okay. I, I love the uh, mushroom frequency. Okay. That one's my favorite. Which one? Which one? The mushroom frequency. Oh, the uh, psilocybin one? Okay. Yeah. What kind of tips or advice would you give somebody that's, um, you know, they want to help manifest the things that they want to do in their life? Like what kind of guidance could you give them? What kind of, kind of advice would you give them? Well, number one, I think you need to think about think about your life and think about things that you're holding on to. And first you need to get rid of all of that. So if you've suffered from any kind of abuse, you need to let go of that. And that's all done through meditation. I think one of the most, one of the, the best ways of, of doing that would be to use your DMT frequency because it just feels like so, it's so like clearing and intense. Um, and you, you don't even have to do it for long. Like you could do that, the DMT frequency for five minutes and then you just feel like, you feel like a whole new person. So I think if you're getting into, if you're getting into meditation, like the DMT frequency is definitely one that that's like really great for you. Once you get a, enough practice in, on the meditation and letting things go, then in your meditations, you can really focus on manifesting what, what you want to do. But the thing about meditation and manifestation is that, yes, put the idea out there but it's all about execution and hard work. Things will come to you, but you have to work hard. You have to work hard at it. You have to keep on, keep on doing everything possible to make this dream of yours come true. Otherwise it's not gonna happen. Just thinking about something, that's one step. But the second step is execution. Right. That's my greatest advice. How, how's the best way to get started and take action? Because I find a lot of people they say, uh, how do I get the energy or motivation? Or how do I stop procrastination? How, how do I get my ideas to stop just being ideas and actually become reality? Well, first of all, write things down. You need to write things down and you, you, need, you need to have a plan. Like I would say, write down your goals and look at it every time you wake up and every time you go to sleep. You, there's, a, there's a book called The Power of, of the Subconscious Mind, which I love and I think I've, I've read it like three times and then I've listened to it probably like 10 times, but basically it tells you that your subconscious controls 90% of your actions. 10% is controlled by your conscious. What you need to do if you want to reprogram your, your, if you want different results, you need to change your behavior. So you need to reprogram that subconscious. The best way of reprogramming that subconscious is right when you wake up and right before you're about to go to sleep. So that's the time where you really have to think about what you want to do. Like if you want to heal something, if you want to become the best at anything in the world, if you, if you want a certain dream or something to happen. And then what happens is once it goes into your sub subconscious, like, you know, as you're going throughout your day, you're probably doing, you know, you're making like thousands of decisions. So your conscious doesn't have time to think about all, all that stuff. So that's all governed by your subconscious. And then once, once that happens, then it's just like, then it becomes natural and you'll start seeing things to happen. Program so is conscious and then also oh. write it down so that you're also conscious. So you want to do a combination to, of uh, using combination different of techniques to these, activate different parts of your brain. Parts of your brain. Because you're saying when you're saying sleeping or waking, that's when the that, brain actually the gets brain into actually. a de delta or theta state, right? Be between yeah. the sleeping and the waking. And that's when... Uh, I personally, or actually probably might pretty much everyone gets the best ideas or gets the most intuition or some kind of um, creativity or some kind of um, uh, vision or something or dream. Like yeah. for example, this, yeah, this morning I had this idea that I never th would have thought of if I, if I was just like trying to think of an idea, right? Mm. These ideas that like kind of out of nowhere, they just pop into your mind. And then actually what I do is um, when I'm sleeping, I always have ideas. So I always have a piece of paper and a pen that lights up. So I don't have to turn on the lights to write something down. I would just um, 
turn on the, the pen's light and write on a piece of paper. And then when I wake up it's, and I have a whole bunch of ideas written down. Mm. Yeah. That's great. I, I should, I should do that, that too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, um, yeah, because I guess I, like when you're, when you're dreaming, when you're dreaming and you're sleeping, that's when your brain is like, it's super active with your subconscious. So that's the only time that you can really access those thoughts. Yeah. Um, unless you can train your brain to get into that. But, you know, in the, in the middle of the day, you, people are usually so busy doing their work. They, it's hard to get the brain into that, that mode. Because you have to have, mm -hmm. first of all, you have to have ultra relaxation, right? You need, mm -hmm. to, you need to relax your mind and body to a really deep state before you can actually get your mind to get into those deep um, states. Or you could do mushrooms. <laughs> you do mushrooms. So when you're doing the yeah. DMT frequencies, are you listening to it um, or are you using it with a device, with the cheap oils? Or, um... I, I haven't done it with a device. I normally just listen to it. Mm -hmm. But I, I should try it with a device. What, what do you think is what's the, what, what do you think is better? You can you can do both at the same time, right? You can just split up the signal and then one can go to the coil, one can go to headphones. So okay. You can get both. Ideally, you can do both because then you're stimulating the auditory senses and, and the sound waves, and then also uh, you're stimulating the cells with the um, pulse electromagnetic frequency, the PMF frequency. Mm -hmm. So you can get like like a layers of uh, different therapy with it. Yeah. So tell tell us what um, your goals are and and where do you plan to go in the next um, six months or so? So so now I'm I'm really heavily focused on promoting David's guide. I'm doing so many photo shoots, like I'm shooting people every day and I'm telling their stories. Um, people, people are posting, posting about it. Um, it's getting, it's starting to get, gain a lot of traction. Um, now I'm getting about three to 400 people a day and um, it's only been up for a month. So it's going to keep on growing and growing and growing. So I'm really focused on, on building an SEO strategy between David's guide and the biohack.org. The biohack.org is more about, it's like purely biohacking, but David's guide is more like, it's more general, but it has elements of biohacking and, and, um, meditation and higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's about it. And I'm, I'm planning this big, big um, mm -hmm. it's actually going to be my 40th birthday and, um, it's going to be at hotel Ziggy. And um, it's going to be for 400 people. And um, we're, we're having, the theme is Greek gods and goddesses. Mm -hmm. So the theme is golden. We're going to have golden cocktails and golden food. We're going to have a big step and repeat. We're going to have a biohacking lounge. Um, it's just going to be a really fun time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be epic. Can't wait to um, be there. Um, yeah. I'll do my best to get down there on that date. Um, yeah. Long drive. <laughs> long drive um yeah i'm seeing if i can get on the plane there's, there's some kind of a way to do it i have to figure it out yeah okay so that's great it's been great talking to you and um looking forward to see what you're um going to do with um your two new blogs thanks yeah. and then you've been able to um connect me with a lot of uh you know important people as well so thank you a lot for that and that helping helping me to basically i manifested you when I was uh, looking for somebody who can help me connect with others. And then, and then you helped me manifest a lot of people that um, are like part of my, my social network now. They're very important. All right. That's awesome. Okay, thanks, David. So, I mean, if you want to learn more about David's uh, uh, website, just go to davidsguide.com. The link is gonna be in the description and as well uh, as the, um, the other one with thebiohack.org.